What's up, everybody? It's your girl Kush right here on Kush Me Please. Bringing it to you raw and gritty. So, um, the new year has started. 2018 ended off wonderfully. I mean, um, I don't know if anybody else noticed, but 2018 was a very, very long slash short year. Like, Black Panther came out in 2018, and it damn near felt like it came out in 2016, honestly, but that's how long 2018 is. But anyway, um, 2019 started off wonderful for me. I hope everybody else, you know, starting off their year great. Um, let's not necessarily go into the new year with the New Year's resolution. Let's kind of go into the new year with a better energy, you know, like, fuck the resolution, because, I mean, we've been saying this shit since goddamn... I don't know when, like, new year, new me, nah, fuck that shit, same me, new year, and better energy, that's what I'm trying to bring to the table, so, um, we're starting off the year with the government shutdown, and I really want to talk about that right now, because that's been on my mind, um, because, you know, this is, very much going to affect our families um out there it's going to affect a lot of our friends out there especially the friends that are working with the government or you know um uh that are in like government jobs or whatever the case may be that's affecting them um my heart goes out to you guys for real um because there's no fucking way i'm gonna be working and not getting paid (laughs) this is not possible like you you not gonna see me i'm yeah some of y'all good calling out because y'all might not even hear from me (laughs) for real for real tsa uh social security office i don't care (laughs) y'all gonna be looking for me (laughs) but um trump has been really really persistent on building this wall and i think that he's failing to realize um you know Focusing on building this wall is going to create more problems. Um, already, it's off gate. Already, you know, creating a lot of issues with people calling out from airports with TSA. Um, first of all, if you got people that work that's working in the airport calling out, and <laughs> I don't understand. Okay, so if you got people from the airport calling out. And you focus on this wall, but you got a whole line of like everybody terrorists and people that have just bad intentions with the United States. They can come through these airports any moment, any time now, because there's not a lot of people working in airports to support the the, the amount of people coming through there. So I don't understand, you know, like Mr. Trump, what are you doing? Like, I mean, with all due respect, like what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> dead ass you know what i mean like you literally taking money away from people like not only did you fuck up 2018 by putting babies in camps but now you got motherfuckers losing homes potentially like losing their minds trying to figure out what what's what's, what they're gonna do next because you talking about shutting the government down for months and i quote unquote years first of all mr president you gonna be out the fucking office 2020 so i don't know what you talking about years (laughs) because i don't know what years you talk about but you're not gonna be no president 2020 so anyways cut that shit loose and you definitely not gonna sit over here and tell us that you're gonna keep our taxes away from us either see that's another thing that that's really irking people with the government shutdown the taxes people's ir (laughs) irs w2 checks are being withheld yes i said it coming to you live from kush they're being withheld because the president's ass wants to throw a fucking tantrum anyways um that was a lot to to take in i know so roll up a backwood do what you gotta do i know y'all out there stressed out so get you some good old one of your favorite strand of weed because weed is the best thing in the world (laughs) and you know smoke you something and listen to this right here on kush me please Yeah, I know you was a diagram. Die, red, die, red. Look like chicken pox. Damn. Damn. 
All right, we're back at it again. I hope y'all smoke session was just as lit as mine. Um, now, with the whole government shutdown, um, to close things off, because I don't want to dwell on this too much, but, you know, to close things off, we can definitely make a difference, guys. Um, we're definitely moving into a different century pretty soon, you know what I mean? Like... We have more of an open mind, open minded society now. Um, so there's many things that we can do to raise awareness, to 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 make ourselves stand out. You know, we can use social media as a platform to be heard and, and make a difference. You know what I mean? Like create petitions, whatever the case may be. We can stand up to this. We do not have to take this shit from nobody. Damn sure we don't got to take that shit from Trump. So. Seriously, think of some ideas. Send those ideas to me so we can talk about that shit the next time I come on air. Um, now, jumping to the next thing. Okay, so what in the fucking world, yo? Like, I think memes are moving faster than I am, um, than the speed of light. Like, I mean, there's always a different meme trending literally within a week. Like, just last week, there was a meme trending for um, Bird Box. And now, motherfuckers an incorporated Bird Box meme with the R. Kelly situation. And I, it's just like, damn, like, you know... Okay, let me introduce myself to y'all before I even start off with this. My name is Krishangi, and y'all can call me Kush. But um, on my show, you know, I want to be as nitty and gritty as possible. So I was thinking, like, maybe I should have a meme award for <laughs> every time that I uh, go on air. Like, what's the hottest meme? What's the hottest thing out right now with the memes? You know what I mean? Like, let's talk about that because a lot of people are on the wave with the memes. And shit, I remember when memes first came out, motherfuckers was pronouncing that shit like memes and shit like that. Like, I feel old now, but um, the meme that's trending right now is the meme with the bird box. It's a lot of bird box memes. So it's a lot of bird box memes going down Twitter feed, going down Facebook feed, all that shit. And with the R. Kelly situation. Now, I personally don't think that that R. Kelly situation should be meme like material because it's not it's a very sensitive topic you know um it deals with sexual assault it deals with women that you know dealt with trauma um but my views on that are, is is very murky because <laughs> i mean you know I, my question to those women and also you know like the ones that came out about it is like okay i really want to know like within the 20 years i'm not saying that you know this didn't happen i'm not saying that it did happen but within the 20 30 years that 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 went by like why why are we just now hearing about this? And, you know, I'm starting to feel like this is becoming more of a trend than it's becoming um, like something that should be taken seriously. Like the media is taking it and I feel like they're twisting it into something that they can make money off of and get views out of more so than actually helping these women. And I don't know. It's, I don't really want to get too deep into that right now. But, you know, um, I know that that's going around with, you know, a lot of people are, you know, it's two sides going on right now with the R. Kelly situation. So, um, that definitely is something that I want to touch base on soon. I want to at least have a guest when I do that, but, um, we're going to get back into the whole, you know, sexual assault situation, especially in Hollywood. Like, oh man, don't let me get started with my conspiracy theories because, man Hollywood got so much shit I mean I'm almost afraid to talk about this shit because the Illuminati might come out and get me but shit if I go missing y'all know who the fuck took my ass but dead ass I mean I did some research on B2K you know the B2K concert coming out shout out to that but you know I don't even know if I want to go anymore because like after finding out that B2K like you know majority of the members in the B2K um family there was being molested and you know they were raped and stuff like that um and and that's i just i don't know man like people don't understand hollywood is so dangerous like and i sound crazy trying to tell people this because like a lot of people you know don't know how to take this in but it's so much like satanism going on in hollywood and in the music industry and a lot of people that are in the elite um you know like the ones that hold weight for real for real like 
people that are over Sony, people that are over like major companies and businesses and things like that, they are in these satanic groups and cults and they do these rituals and they molest kids and, and they rape kids and it's like why am I not hearing about this and this is what makes me upset is like yo why are y'all not shedding light on all this you know why are y'all just shedding light on 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 what's going on with within the african-american like male population like, y'all only coming after african-american males to me i feel like at this point like what about surviving donald trump and surviving fucking you know charlie sheen and shit like that like what the fuck happened to that i mean i, I want i want people to play things fair so i want documentaries out on you know surviving freaking elite uh, Caucasian men that you know have the power to 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 put the their dirt under the rug and and pay people off and they can get away with murder basically you know so it's a lot of nasty shit going on in this world for real for real a lot of weird shit going on in Hollywood and y'all just need to be careful with what y'all listening to you know um who y'all listening to and all that shit because that really does play a big impact on on your well-being on on your own development but anyways um I feel like, you know, it's time to go ahead and get into, you know, some more music, um, get into the groove of things. Let's go ahead and roll up another backwood. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm up for smoking back to back because <laughs> I am a stoner. So let's get back into it. And yeah. I swear while swerving, she drunk and twerking. The way she move her body got me high. Yeah, nervous, she shy. She gorgeous, she kind. She perfect, her vibe make her wavy like she came up out the ocean. And I'm so uncertain if I am worth it. Just to be blessed with her presence is a present. And she like a potion, give me purpose. All right. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, so um, during the break, I was uh, talking to my friend um, about the bird box, and I have some questions <laughs> for bird box. For bird box, I have some questions for Netflix. Honestly, like first of all, I personally think that bird box. Oh shit. I just dropped my keys. Anyways, I personally think that Bird Box should have been turned into a show. It's just so many things that y'all could have given us details on. Like, for one, between the time that boy and girl was growing up, like, they weren't bothered. Like, nobody bothered them. Then all of a sudden, boy and girl turned five years old, and then those people wanted to, <laughs> like, finally disturb their peace. It didn't make no sense to me. And then, like, on top of that, it's like, yo, like, you you really was that hard body that you couldn't name your kids? Like, you just had to name them boy, girl? Like, <laughs> you know, what would y'all do in a situation like that? Like, that's a very interesting thing to know. Like, what would be y'all first, like, what would y'all do? Like, one of your senses is basically being taken away from you. It's being stripped from you. And you're having to rely on other senses to help you survive yo like that is some crazy shit that kind of remind me of that movie a quiet place um where you couldn't make a sound or anything like that whoa that's a whole nother level because i talk too much for me for me to have to even survive in a situation like that so you know definitely want to know what y'all think about you know your methods in surviving like what would y'all do in that situation like how would you guys have moved like would you guys have just said fuck it <laughs> and took off you know and then like let them like just take over or would you have tried to survive like sandra did um one of those one of those interesting things about bird box is that people you know people don't realize that there's a really deeper message behind that um i'm a very deep person i like to deep i like to go into things very very like i'm just a very intricate person so i like to go beneath the surface in everything <laughs> so i was asking myself you know like in that in that in that kind of situation you know it it kind of reflects like people were talking about it, but it kind of reflects like, you know, your um, your your mental stability, basically, like it's kind of reflecting mental illness in the movie. Um, a lot of people might have kind of gotten the subliminal message behind that as well. Um, 
but you know that's a very very interesting way to incorporate you know mental illness because in the movie the people that were already mentally ill or the people that were already corrupt they weren't affected by them or whoever the demons were um the demons actually possessed them and took over their mental like their mental so it kind of is interesting because it's like that's kind of like what's happening with you know people that are going through schizophrenia um (laughs) people that are schizophrenic and you know it's going through the people that um have multiple personality disorders and and it makes you wonder like could that be like you know because we really are energies we really are spirits so that was the interesting thing about bird box but moving along um I kind of want to know what my viewers and my listeners feel about living in a perfect world. You know, in a com- write down in the comments below, or if you want, you can follow me on Instagram, Trap Money Cushy. <laughs> That's trap with two Ps, Trap Money Cushy XO. Follow me on Instagram and send me a DM and let me know, like, in a perfect world, like, what's the perfect world to you? What do you expect out of, out of, you know, a perfect world because we live in such a contaminated world right now. We're living in such a world where it's just so destructive. Um, it's becoming self-destructive and, you know, I want to know like what we can think of to, to, to create this perfect quote unquote perfect world, but maybe we can come up with solutions when we think of that because we can, um, how do I say it? We can act upon it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that's what you want in a perfect world, well, act upon that. You know what I mean? Like, if you feel like a perfect world to you is, you know, uh, food and there's food everywhere, whatever, well, act upon that and start giving food to the homeless. You know what I'm saying? And start giving food to just random people. Like, if you got six donuts, give one of your donuts to a random stranger or whatever. That's a perfect world. Like, just create that outlet for people um, and just see how the universe kind of brings that back tenfold to you because the universe definitely will give you what you ask it you know so go ahead and dm me um let me know what a perfect world is to you and i will be more than happy to discuss that in the next um time that i'm on air or whatnot all right so i know that the underground culture is becoming big um I know that the underground culture was like really becoming big around 2012, 2011. That's really when I really started doing this, you know, radio broadcasting thing and really tapping into my um, my radio broadcast personality senses, (laughs) spidey senses or whatever. But anyways, um, as far as to like, oh, hold on, wait one second. I just kind of lost track of my let me (laughs) get something to drink. (laughs) But um. One second, y'all. One second. But back to what I was saying um, with the with the underground culture, it has it has like expanded tremendously. I mean, I remember like Greens. I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina, and shout out to Gate City. But you know, I remember when like aspiring artists were just coming up and like they were like finding out ways to like you know present themselves in shows and showcase and you know like just creating like their path to their dreams and I mean it has grown so much from that um you know because now we have people that have their own name brands they have created their own clothing lines we have people that have their own management groups where you don't necessarily even need the music industry you know like unless you're really trying to get up there get up there unless you're really trying to be like some you know like um grammy award winner or whatever the case may be you know the underground mix is all majority of people that that's growing up in this generation need now because they have everything now you got your own publicist you got your own you know um PR you just you got your you got your home management group right there ready for you so you know the underground culture is definitely something that I feel like I will be talking to my kids about you know when when they're when they're growing up and when I like I remember back in my day <laughs> so, 
<laughs> the conversation started off with that. But um, speaking of underground culture, we're going to go into some underground artists right now. I want y'all to go ahead and tune in, vibe with me with some underground artists, aspiring artists, people that are all about their crafts. I mean, this is this is where dreams come true right here from the bottom. If you wanna eat the pussy, gotta pay for it. Ride in a dick like a skateboard. Smoking big gas when I pass by, I'll wave to it. It's one, two, three niggas tryna get me. The four, five, I take you out, watch and see. Six bitches on my dick sucking me. Seven, eight, nine, ten, bitch, try again. I don't give a fuck about you. Whew, there is nothing like the underground sound I tell you that right now I mean with uh, with the underground music you definitely get in the culture and you gain the passion off gate all right so um jumping into I, I like to jump into different topics y'all gonna have to just catch up with me like I'm just one of those things like catch me if you can type shit like so jumping into the next topic um pet peeves I want you guys to look deep within yourself and figure out what ticks you the fuck off. I'm not just talking about like, you know, waiting in line and being like, you know, impatient or some of that, like really dig deep because I personally think that when it comes down to pet peeves, you really know who you are through what you don't like more so than what you do like. And that may sound like kind of like what, <laughs> but it's facts like, I figure out a lot about myself when I'm going through adversity, when I'm going through shit and I'm having to face the most worst part of myself because there is definitely many versions of ourselves. Um, Y'all should definitely look into that book, Our Many Selves. Um, let me actually look that up. I want to know the artist. I forgot the artist's name. Give me one second here. Um... But look into this book. Y'all can order it on Amazon. It's like $6, $7 on Amazon. <coughs> it's by Elizabeth O'Connor, Our Many Selves. Y'all need to read that book for real, for real. Because that book talks about like figuring out yourself like and how there's different versions of ourselves but the three primary roles of ourselves is the um child the adult and the parent and you know I kind of realized my child my adult and my parent version of myself through my pet peeves and through what I didn't like you know like what ticked me off and made me have tantrums as if like I was a child you know what I'm saying or you know like what stresses me out to the point where I have to act like an adult and be like oh shit like this is a responsibility I got to fix this I got to fix that you know and of course the parent like what what is like so painful and so daunting to me that causes me to become a nurturing parent you know what I mean or or like the band-aid uh to to a situation whether it's to myself or for others or whatever the case may be pet peeves for my for myself I personally um I do not like to be lied to you know um I feel like a lie is deeper than just not telling the truth um you're definitely creating a whole plethora of of different emotions when you're telling a lie because you are not only leading on you're not only leading somebody on by telling a lie but you're also creating a delusion for somebody else to believe in and I just don't think that's right like that's just not how I move so you know I just don't like liars so stop quit the bullshit 2019 quit lying like yo if you don't like shorty tell shorty you don't like her like if you only want him because he buy you food tell him like I only want you because you buy me food like it's not that hard for real for real like what's hard is to is to lead somebody on and then have to deal with the heartbreak and then y'all wonder why y'all got stalkers <laughs> for real for real um and another pet peeve that I have honestly is um kind of goes hand in hand with lying honestly but disrespect anybody that knows kush knows kush don't like disrespect like don't disrespect me bro like i'm a very chill person so like i just the whole disrespect shit just don't the the anatomy of disrespect don't even equal add up to me honestly like like why you know what i'm saying like why do you have to be so bothered by my presence that it causes you to disrespect disrespect me or taunt me or test me or whatever the case may be like don't do that because you are sure to get your fucking pimp hand slap quick 
with that disrespect. Don't come my way with that. So those are my two pet peeves. And through those pet peeves, I have also learned <laughs> how to humble myself. So, you know, I've learned to pick and choose my battles. Um, not everything got to set me off. Not every disrespectful person got to set me off. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I just got to let them be. Um, and, you know, <sighs> I am going to go ahead. Another pet peeve is to recite my poems because I am a very, very shy person. But I wanted to do something to to introduce myself to you guys because this is my first time really airing myself live, you know, visual <laughs> and also you know on air and everything like that and I really want you guys like my listeners and my viewers like I wanted to feel like I'm sitting in the living room beside you while you smoking your blunt and you talking to me type shit like I want this to be very intimate between us you know what I'm saying like every single one of y'all so um by doing so I have to touch intimate parts of myself and bring that out you know, so and expose myself to you guys. And I am a very poetic person. I love to write poems. Um, I've been writing since I was a kid, since I was like, I mean, since I could write, honestly. Like, my mom would tell you, like, I mean, she got stacks and stacks of composition books in her closet. Like, of all my literature, of all the things, like the little short stories I wrote since, since I was a kid and all that good stuff. I'm not going to bring that shit out. That's only for the family to know. <laughs> But um, one of the poems that I want to go ahead and recite, I actually wrote a couple of days ago. And I wrote this in less than five minutes. Y'all might not even believe me. And some of my some of y'all might be like, yeah, that is she wrote that shit in five minutes. <laughs> but um, I was trying to, you know, challenge myself because I hadn't picked up a pen and wrote a poem or, you know, challenged my brain to write a poem in a long time, um, especially with wordplay, because my wordplay is sick, sick. I tell you, like one of these days I'm a freestyle on here and y'all gonna see how sick my wordplay is. Y'all gonna be like, oh, she might as well be a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> but um, my wordplay is sick, so I wanted to kind of, you know, get my juice running with the wordplay because I have not wrote a poem in forever, and like I've been in a writer's block like mode in so long. So I wrote this poem, and I wanted y'all to hear it. And um, we're gonna go ahead and close the show off, you know, with with that. And um, yeah. So let me just go ahead. As you can see, my hands, my palms are sweating. And all right, <laughs> here it goes, y'all. Um, I have not named this poem. I don't know what to call it. So I'm just going to let you guys kind of name it for me, you know, because this is like one of those little rough draft poems I just kind of played around with. It's like a freestyle. But um, if you guys come up with a name for this poem, DM it to me, my Instagram, trap money cushy XO, trap two peas don't forget two peas but um all right so here it goes <clears throat> it cut deep like a thorn on a rose he cut me we sat across the room making love with our eyes but i'm almost positive he doesn't see me it cut deep like a thorn on a rose he cut me like a dagger to the bone i drowned in his misery company i allowed to keep Souls I tried to save, but only made me weep. So I swore to myself I wouldn't do that to me again and again gently, just to end up in the crevices of a self-intoxicated death penalty. Boom! <laughs> As you can see, yeah. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but anyways, go ahead and let me know what you guys think about you know that poem, and also send me the title, whatever title you want me to title that poem. I'll go ahead and title it in in your honor. But all right, that is all you get from Kush for today. I will be back. All right, like the Terminator, I will be back. Um, but anyways, if you guys want to see a lot more on Kush Me, please let me know. Like, I mean, this is about the fans. This is about you more than it's about me. Like, like I said, I want y'all to feel like I'm sitting in the smoke session with y'all. I want y'all motherfuckers to be like, damn, Kush, Kush talking that real shit. You know, she dropping the real shit. Okay. That's what I want. So please interact with me on my Instagram and then we're going to get shit popping right here on Kush Me with your girl Kush.
Boy, you playing fucking games in my name at EA. No, I want the real thing and I want some foreplay. Yep. If you not hearing me, then you ain't heard a thing. I don't want no fake shit, boy. I want the real thing. Boy, you playing fucking games in my name at EA. Boy, I want the real thing and I want some foreplay. If you not hearing me, then you ain't heard a thing. I don't want no fake shit, boy. I want the real thing. Huh. I wanna see a shine bright like a dime. Like a dime. Like Rihanna said, he wanna get behind. Get behind. But tell me, boy. How the hell I'm supposed to trust you When you a Leo feed me loud yeah, you